You ain't never seen a man turn leg go with his hands. You ain't never seen a man get a queen wet with a glance. What a turn, why whole wide world, mind in my mind. In and out of time, my light shine bright for the blind. Somebody where I do it. 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 So I'm gonna be a millionaire soon, but I already knew it. I'ma die the bullets fluid. All this winning therapeutic. Somebody where I do it. Somebody where I do it. They be trying to drain my energy up with the battery is not included. Women trying to be recruited. Let them do the then I bought it. What is cute that she fall it? Somebody the way I do it. I remember playing ring around the rosy. Now I got a pocket full of OZs. Water dollars, wallet full of old cheese. Got a Glock, a cock and pop a police. Block a block a block a boom. Shock a lock a bottle. Shot him while he rock a rosary. Got your mama watching out the nose, please. Sloppy toppy while I'm trying to go sleep. Some but the way I do it, I ball out like a nude is hooping. Or a Hoosier student. Got the problem, I'm a room is cubic. I'm a superhuman. You a decorated unit fusion. Got the music booming. Marijuana got me tumor losing. I'm in my room secluded, get it rooted with the shroom I'm using. Everything you to Peace family, welcome to another episode of Underground Railroad Productions with your host, Brother Rich, with the living legend, Professor Griff. Welcome back, brother. Oh, give thanks, Brother Rich. I'm up in the corner of the United States, uh, Portland, Oregon, doing some work with Tyler El Hakim in the Black History 101 Mobile Museum. In and out of these colleges, in and out of these schools, trying to educate these young people about some black history and about some other things, present state of politics and what's going on in the world. But, hey, somebody got to do it, right? (laughs) (laughs) That's right. That's right, man. That's dope, man. Yeah, that's definitely dope, man. Oh, good. Thanks, man. How long are you going to be out there for? I was already out here for a half. Yeah, I got it back to the I'm going to travel against the rain this week across hey, the country right now. Hey, Griff, you you breaking up a little. Hello? Can you hear me? I hear you right now, yeah. Yeah, you was breaking up when you was talking. I, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, the weather in the country is ridiculous right now. Ah. Yeah. Okay, okay. Well, we definitely got a good show for y'all tonight. Uh... I want to talk to you about an interesting article. Uh, a couple of people, well, I've seen somebody posted on Instagram that another uh, brother sent it to me um, via text, and it's kind of, uh, it's something worth talking about. Um, actually, the article was from Time Magazine, and the article says, um, Tasteless, Vulgar, and Obscene, China Just Banned Hip-Hop Culture and Tattoos from Television. And uh, let me read this uh, this clip, this this article real quick. It says China has banned hip hop culture and actors with tattoos from appearing on television. The country's top media regulator, the State Administration of Press, Publication, Radio, Film, and Television of the People's Republic of China, now specifically requires that programs should not feature actors with tattoos or depict hip hop culture, subculture. And dispirited culture, decadent culture, um, uh, Cena, a Chinese news outlet reports. Um, the director of administration's publicity department outlined four don't rules on Friday. Absolutely do not use actors whose heart and morality are not aligned with the party and whose morality is not noble. Absolutely do not use actors who are tasteless, vulgar, and obscene. Absolutely do not use actors whose ideological level is low and have no class. Absolutely do not use actors with stained scandals and problematic moral integrity. Wow, this the band follows the removal of the prominent rapper Gaia from Hunan TV singers uh from Hunan TV singer, a hit competition show. Um so I'm gonna end it there. And um it's pretty interesting because last year uh Chinese authorities they actually banned uh Chinese regulators banned uh cryptocurrency trading exchanges and initial coin offering and, and Bitcoin mining. So people were saying that China's seeing what's going on around the world and they make it a move to maintain their power. They're gonna do anything to protect the party. So some people saying that this is some bullshit. This looks like an episode from Black Mirror. 
some people are saying, man, this is what we should have done in America a long time ago when gangster culture first got introduced to hip hop. So I got to talk to Professor Griff, man. Please let me know what you think about what you just read and heard, brother. Well, brother Rich, I have different views. Um, first of all, we need to understand the history of China. Um, I'm not sure if um, the people that are listening have done the research about the history of China. I'm sure they have. Um, but what the history of China that they give you in school won't suffice in this case, simply because if you understand the depth of China being a communist country, um, you, have to, you have to understand China has, has had a history of cracking down on the people. I mean, a very vivid, live I don't want to say brutal. I don't want to paint China that way, but um, they've been cracking down um, a lot in, in different in different areas, and it's um, it's just one of those kind of situations where it's not America. It's not it's not some of these other places where where we live and enjoy certain kind of uh, certain kind of privileges and certain kind of uh, so called um, freedoms as far as saying what you want to say and doing what you want to do. Um, North Korea is another place where they had certain kind of crackdowns and other places. Um, but I can honestly say, Brother Rich, this last statement that you made, that you said someone else said that they should have had this kind of crackdown on gangster rap. Well, America's gangster. There would be no, there would be no music and no television shows and no film industry if it wasn't for the fact that America depicting uh, itself in a very true like when you're talking about gangs in New York, when you're talking about mobsters and gangsters and thugs and cowboys and Indians and army flicks where uh, the white guy always saves the white girl at the end of the day, there would be no music industry. There would be no music, I mean, no film industry. All right? This is what it's thrived on. When I first read the article, I thought about the, uh, the uh, reality show Black Ink. With all this, yeah, you don't see anybody getting a damn tattoo. <laughs> you, understand, you understand what I'm saying? Um, at the same time, I was reading that. I heard what Cardi B said in reference to if, some, if uh, something happens to her, know that the government took her out. When people like Cardi B and other people watch uh, and read and watch stuff on, on the Internet and watch stuff on the news, a lot of times they apply some of these, these, these things to themselves and put themselves in a position that maybe a minister of Farrakhan or someone else um, may be the target or maybe getting treated a certain way. And they kind of figure that if anything happens to their career, you will automatically blame the government. Um, uh, no, this is not 1960. This is not the turbulent 60s where black organizations and, and, uh, that, that rose up to defend themselves against the government and against brutality, against racism, I don't find some of these artists doing this. When I first read the article, Rich, let me, let me back up and say this. So Cardi B and others need to check themselves. The government is not out to kill uh, black rappers. Not for what you're saying. Uh, you understand what I'm saying? Um, probably uh, looking into some of the things that you might be doing, but not necessarily what you're saying. I'm not hating on the Cardi B's of the world, but let's just get real and be real about this. On the other note, when I read the article in reference to China, I just said, okay, that's almost typical of China. All right? And I just said to myself, okay, well, I don't think they should crack down on, on tat people with tattoos and music. They may, want to, they may want to fine-tune some of the things that they're cracking down on simply because, you know how many people I know with tattoos are the rich? <laughs> yes. Yeah that do music that's in the film industry. So it's, it's ridiculous. I think China has another alternative, Brother Rich. And I, I, don't, I, don't, I think they're targeting hip-hop unjustly, and I think targeting people with tattoos unjustly. That's my take on it. Would you, would you call this anti-blackness, or is that going a little too far? I think uh, race has a, uh, there's a component to it of race, there's a component to it of, uh, of, of politics, there's um, I meant to say there's a political uh, component to it, there is a, um, a cultural component to it. We need to understand who's actually running 
China. And we are in China right now. And we need to understand it for what it is. Plain and simple. So yes, it's anti culture. Um and simply because black people have been the ones that have led in culture all across the world, especially with hip hop, because everybody on the planet participates uh and and, and, and uh, does hip hop. Regardless of where it is, China, Russia, Yugoslavia, Indonesia, Malaysia, the Philippines, Thailand, Cambodia. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you name it, hip hop is there. So when you look at it, you gotta say, well, wow, are they stopping artists from coming in and performing in China, or are they stopping the Chinese people from participating in hip hop culture? You have to look at it like that, and you can't keep it off the table. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I was I was looking at a clip. Uh, Blue Pill put a clip up uh, on his Instagram with a uh, I guess it was a, a South Korean um, like a like a like a video show or something on music show, and uh, they was talking about they had like little young uh, Korean dudes singing on there, and it sounded like eighties and nineties R and B music from America. And I was yeah. reading the comments, and I read an article, and they were saying how popular 80s and 90s R&B is in South Korea. I think it's in Seoul, South Korea. You know, Seoul, South Korea. Mm-hmm. So right. it, it, it's interesting <laughs> here. So, so it's interesting that, you know, over here we're like, damn, what happened to R&B music? We don't get R&B over here no more. So and R&B is popping over there right now. So what, what do you think about Asia picking up on um, – Something that we're looking for over here, they don't picked up on it and, and is running with it. Is that is you consider that like like a pr- cultural appreciation or is that like cultural appreci- appropriation to you? I don't think it's cultural appropriation uh, so much so as to look at it and say it's cultural appreciation. Um, I know some artists from Korea, as a matter of fact. Sammy Sam, he's from Korea. He travels with Public Enemy. He travels with us. And it's not so much. They appreciate black culture. They revere black black culture. So it's not cultural appropriation. I could see if they weren't uh, giving back. I can see if they weren't giving the credit uh, to the art. And they give back. And, and, and if you ask them in interviews or have personal conversations with you, they'll tell you. Their influences are Black people from America, that classic soul era. And, and, and right on through, right on through Asia, especially when um, back in the 60s and 70s, when so many black people were in the military coming through those particular areas. Of course, uh, black music uh, inundated those areas, man. Inundated those areas and then... Um, right about the time uh, Mao and uh, a few other people were in place in China, shortly after that, whew, they took a hold to black music and black artistry like it was nothing, man. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? So if you go online right now and you go to soul, classic R&B, from Asia or from China or from Japan, you would be shocked and surprised how many uh, artists you have from uh, that area that's doing classic soul music. Mm. Indeed, indeed. They listen, well, they listen to Otis Redding and the Temptations and B.B. King and the Supremes and Aretha Franklin like we do. <laughs> Man. Wow. Mm. So I would say it's cultural appreciation. Mhm. Definitely. When, when you um, when you see people in America, and let, let's say they uh, they, they 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 go to prison and they you know they get their life together. They go to prison and they and they start eating better and they start working out and you know um. They, they they might turn Muslim or they turn to some particular religious system and they you know they 
they become more religious. They 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 in more. They 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 appreciate God and the and the, the, the divine nature of humanity more. And uh, when they come home, they read more. And when they come home, it seems as though within a year, a lot of that disappears with a lot of individuals. I'm looking at this from Korea and how they want to take certain freedoms from people. And I want to ask you, Griff, do you think that one way to better society, like we we might be mad at the direction society is going, but do you think one of the fastest ways to to better society is to take away certain privileges from society or certain freedoms from society or forcing the people to read or forcing the people to do something, forcing the people to eat a certain way? Is that the only way that we're going to... Uh, create this society that we you know, that we desire, Professor Griff. At this point, no, because people just totally because it seems as though people totally lack self discipline. So it seems like when you force them to do it, that's when they do it. But go ahead, brother. Well, no, no, that's that, that's not the, that's not the only way, and I wouldn't suggest that. The only way I would suggest that is if we start from the top down. Let's start with uh, president, right on down to the Congress, the Senate. Um, just and right on down through the government, all three, all three houses. Um, let's work our way straight on down. Let's start with the top Democrats and the top Republicans. And let's work our way all the way down, and then let's see how it works by the time we get to the average person. <laughs> let's restrict mm-hmm. them. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Right, right, if right. You did, if you did uh, uh, some research on how much each Congress person makes, it'll blow your wig back, man. Mm. They don't. They don't. They don't live like the average person. Mm. They restrict us, and we don't have the freedoms that they have, brother. We're already restricted. Most of us just want them to lift the restrictions, and so we can be free. For example, you know, people I know have uh, that had home gardens in their backyard mm-hmm. that grew a, t- a tomato or two, or some onions, or some asparagus, or something. No more, because the government says you can't. If they find you growing organic food, they, they can arrest you. Mm. So you're talking about restrictions. Wow. You talk about When you talk about restrictions, you talk about forced vaccination? <laughs> so who is really being restricted, Brother Rich? Mm. Restriction is already here. When you talk about redlining, uh, forcing people to live in certain areas, creating ghettos, Come on, Brother Rich. You're already mm. talking about restrictions. I say if we're going to do that, let's start from the top. Mm-hmm. Let's restrict Trump and the rest of these people from saying and doing some of the things that they're saying. Brother Rich, the goddamn government is shut down. Mm. Yeah. Can you imagine that? It's supposed to be the greatest place on the planet Earth with all kind of freedom. And it's supposed to be a place where democracy is actually working. But the goddamn government shut down. It's like, uh, we quit. We're going home. We'll check y'all out next week. <laughs> it's crazy. Come on, man. That is crazy. That is absolutely nuts, man. Did, did they, did they make any progress? Good, good. Yeah, they, yeah they, they made some progress. I don't mean to cut you off. Oh. They made some progress. They agreed to, uh, I think, February 3rd. They're going to extend it to February 3rd to keep the government running. But they got to come to some kind of solution after that. Mhm. Wow. I mean, er- earlier or uh, to start off the show, I-, I brought up the example of, um, you know, we're we're hearing about this band from uh, China on um, hip hop. Uh, I mentioned about them blocking certain cryptocurrency uh, platforms and and exchanges. Where do you see the world government? A lot of people are happy because they're like, you know, the cryptocurrency is going to change the, you know, the way music is is done, the way uh, blockchain, I mean, is going to change the way music is done, it's going to change the way money is done, it's going to change everything, it's going to change the entire world. Where do you see, with, with all of this going on and people are saying the governments are scared and all the protests, the Women's March and... Uh, you see the Black Lives Matter marches happen and everything going on around the world. What do you see? What do you see government being in, in let's say, ten, fifteen years from now? Is it going to be the same, or do you think we're going to have a totally different uh, government in place? 
No, you're going to get a lot of uh, what you see now, but it's going to be worse. Simply because um, they're going to start cracking down, and you're going to see them wheeling their eyes at this book bar, controlling people and manipulating people and locking people down. Um, something similar to some of the movies that have been coming out over the last 20 years, um, Running Man and some of these other movies. Uh, where they a big brother and them controlling uh, people on a massive, on a massive scale. Um, I, it, it, it's sad to think, Brother Rich, when I look forward, I say to myself, wow, the people don't even realize what, 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 what's in store for them. The government is not, is not go, this is not going to get better because they have to stay in control. You understand what I'm saying? They have to have a central banking system that they manipulate and control and keep the masses of the people, regardless of what your complexion is, down. The one percent is not giving that up, man. Trust me, they're not, man. Mm. They're not giving that up. And they're, they're going to do whatever it takes to keep the people under, under control. Go back and watch some of these movies that have came out about how the government is going to be in you know, in 2030 and 2050. Yeah. They're, they're, going, they're going to be brutal, man. Multi jurisdictional task forces are going to be roaming the streets of America. Um, um, brutal police force that don't even speak English. Some of them may be robots, Brother Rich. So, yeah, it, it, it's going to be critical. So, the crackdown in China is just a warning. Right. Did you see uh, Black Mirror yet on Netflix? No, no, no. I, I didn't see it because I was too busy listening to Monique. Uh, <laughs> she, uh, <laughs> Boy, uh, yo, man, I, I love Monique. I'm a ride and die for Monique, man. You understand what I'm saying? I'm laughing I'm rap about brain around some of the things that she said in the past. But if you really listen to her, that sister has a point, man. And something I've been saying for a long time, if you really listen to her, I've been saying the same thing. I try to warn people about Hollywood. Am mm -hmm. I right or wrong? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, I, I, didn't hear, I, didn't, I didn't hear what she had to say yet. I got to go. Uh, I, I've seen everybody yeah, making fun of her, go. but I, I, I didn't hear it yet. I think these people that's making fun of her, they probably don't understand the dynamics of what's going on in Hollywood with the film industry and with the movie industry. Uh, I, would, I, would, I would hope that people would stop for a minute with the joking and pay attention to what that sister has to say because she has a very, very valid point. Very, very valid point. And then the people that are turning against her, wow, she, she's absolutely right. I don't want to turn this into a Monique interview, but I'm just saying, she said, you ain't got no friends in Hollywood. Them people are looking out for themselves, man. Mm. But anyway, go listen to Monique, and then maybe you and I need to talk about that. But like <laughs> I said, I'm riding. I'm riding for Monique, man. Indeed, indeed, man. Wow. Well, I got, I got, I got one more uh, question for you, Griff, before we mm -hmm. wrap it up. Uh, why, why do you think Griff? When, when you hear the other musical genres and all the drug references, like in country music, and uh, they, they actually came out and said country music has more drug references than any music. And, uh, you know, we hear about hip-hop. Me and you actually did an interview a couple of weeks ago about the lean in hip-hop, and uh, the dude Fredo Santana just died, a young brother out of Chicago. He died from an overdose of... Um, oh, man. Yeah, my headphones fell out. But yeah, um, Fredo Santana recently died from an overdose of lean. So I mean, you had just did an interview a couple of weeks ago about how much they're talking about lean and uh, hip hop culture. So when you hear about all of these drug references and and, and and hip hop and people overdosing on lean, do you think if it hit home to you, Griff, if it was somebody personally that you know uh, got impacted? And they overdosed on lean because um, they uh, they heard about it in a hip hop song. Would you would you do you think you could pop, you would sing a different tune then? Would you be more understanding to um, 
just getting rid of all of this shit in hip hop because it ain't gonna stop. So somebody got to step in and and stop them from totally destroying the youth. What well, would it be different? Do you think if it hit a little closer to home, Professor Griff? Well, I think from the first time I've heard this stuff, from the first death, from the first incident, from the first, I just said to myself, that has no place in what we're trying to do as far as advancing the culture uh, of hip-hop. I can understand someone telling their story. Don't get me wrong. Be artistic, be an artist, tell your story. But a whole album, Brother Rich, I can't see, man. There's a lot more that goes on in someone's life then, well, I can say that, but I can't say that because I don't live that life. Someone mm-hmm. may say that's listening to this may say, you ain't about that life, dude, so you can't, you ain't rapping about that. I live right. this life since, I, you know, I've been in the hood, I've been on the block, been on these streets ever since I was young. So, so I know that's what I'm, I, I talk about, but every single day, you don't have a peaceful moment where you have some goddamn Captain Crunch. You don't watch fucking cartoons or something. I mean, I'm sure you have a peaceful moment in your life. You know what, <laughs> fucking Popeye or Casper the Friendly fucking Ghost? You know what, you don't have a peaceful moment in your life that you can talk about? So I'm saying to you, it hit close to home a long time ago, man. I love black people. I love our culture. I ride and die for black people. So from any incident that I hear with any artist, regardless of what they were talking about, when I see it affect people the way it does, yeah, man, I'm affected by it, Brother Rich. And not only because I have children, because I care, because I'm an artist. And I'll be the first one to tell people, man, just speak your piece, man. Just rap about what you want to rap about. Write your songs. Because some of them say, yo, I don't write about that kind of shit like you write about, Griff. That's cool. You understand what I'm saying? Um, Some of the songs that do come out, that do tell stories, I like some of them songs. And I, and I listen to them. But I'm not going to sit and listen to a whole album's worth. And then the dude come out with his, his, next, his second album, and you still talking about this shit? It's like, come on, damn. So I'm just saying there needs to be some balance, Brother Rich. And to answer your question directly, it hit close to home a long damn time ago, man. Mm. A long time ago, Brother Rich. And I felt the effect a long time ago. And then when Tupac died, and then when Biggie died, and then when Jam Master J, then when Prince, Michael Jackson, and then when Roger Troutman, um, Whitney Houston, and her her daughter. I mean, Marvin Gaye. Um, uh, I could go Otis Redding. I mean, shoot, I could go on and on and on. Every time someone in the music industry passed, uh, Maurice White, the brother from Whispers. I could go on and on. Bernie Warrell. I could go on and on and on. Every time someone passes away, regardless of how they pass away in the music industry. I always, I always will go back and have a quiet moment and reflect on some of these brothers and sisters that I've met personally, man. And often think, how would the music industry be if they were still here, man? What would be the next Earth, Wind, and Fire song if Maurice White was still here? What would be the next Michael Jackson song What if Prince would open that vault and unleash some of that stuff on us? You understand what I'm saying? Right, right. So I, 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 get, I get torn apart when the least of us die. Plain and simple. That's just me. Maybe some people say, man, you sensitive ass mother. But listen, this is who <laughs> what I am. You understand what I'm saying? Um, and, and, it, and it's because the music is supposed to serve the greater good, man. It's supposed to speak to the higher good of a human being and, and, and raise that vibrational pitch, man, so we can be better people. And I understand some people got their story to tell, but it need, we need a balance with that, man. We need a balance with that, for real. But I really appreciate you, Brother Rich. Indeed, Professor Griff. Leave your info and let them know what you got coming up, brother. Well, right now, I'm still I'm still working this GoFundMe thing for the Oculus Inc. Uh, film that I'm producing. The production started this month. So you can go to www.gofundme.com forward slash Professor Griff Film Oculus Inc. And donate to your heart's content, man. You understand what I'm saying? Um um, I did a, uh, a, a, a Facebook Live yesterday letting everyone know that, that, um, that donated to the film. I, let, I gave them a progress report. I let them know I got, I'm getting the cover, the DVD cover done. I let them know I got three commercial shots. I let them know what I did with the money. We have to be transparent. Right, Would you agree? Right. 
and indeed, of course. So I gave them I gave them a progress report to let them know whether they gave a dime, a nickel, twenty dollars or a hundred dollars, whether they did it on GoFundMe or whether they put it in my hand when they saw me at the mall. I'm letting people know what's going on. Um so I'm crisscrossing the country with Colin El Akeem from the Black History One O one Mobile Museum. So hopefully I'll be in um different cities across the country educating people with the museum. Of course me and Colin got together some time ago, we did the film Artifactual. So this is not my first rodeo with doing the film. Um, you understand what I'm saying? But I'm looking for some those people with that want to donate not only money but donate their resources to step up to the plate and help us out um, with the film. This is definitely turned into a people's project. Of course, it's a Professor Griff's film because it's coming from my mind. And the beautiful thing about it, Brother Rich, the film is based on my book, Symbology, the Psychological Cobra or Hip Hop Book 2. So there is a reference point. Uh, there is a reference point to this. So people can call me directly at 678-557-2919. I'm sure there's some people right now taking out their checkbook with their pen and about to write that million-dollar check so we can get this film done. But I really appreciate you, as always, Brother Rick, and as always, shout-out to my beautiful um, queen, Soleil, who was, who was the first supporter when I even came up with the idea about doing the film, letting me know that she got my back 1,000%. You understand what I'm saying? Indeed. Yeah, I still get screamed on late at night when I got the laptop in the bed and doing research. <laughs> <laughs> anyway... But I really appreciate you, Brother Rich. Definitely, man. I want to thank you for joining us once again this week. Make sure you go to the GoFundMe page. Support Professor Griff. Make sure you also support this channel via PayPal or Patreon. The links will be in the description bar. I want to thank everybody for tuning in once again. And we will see you next week, family. We signing out. Peace. Peace. You ain't never seen a man turn leg go with his hands. You ain't never seen a man get a queen wet with a glance. What a turn, wine, whole wide world, mind in my mind. In and out of time, my light shine bright for the blind. Some about the way I do it. 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 So I'm gonna be a millionaire soon, but I already knew it. I'm a death of bullets fluid. All this winning therapeutic. Some about the way I do it. Some about the way I do it. They be trying to drain my energy up with the battery is not included. Women trying to be recruited. Let them do the then I bought it. What is cute that she fool it? Some about the way I do it. I remember playing ring around the rosy. Now I got a pocket full of OZs. Why the dollars while they full of old cheese? Got a glock, a cock and pop a police. Block a block a block a boom, shock a lock a bottle, shot him while he rock a rosary. Got your mama watching out the nose, please. Sloppy toppy while I'm trying to go sleep. Something about the way I do it, I ball out like a nude is hooping. Or a Hoosier student, got the problem, I'm a Rubik's Cupid. I'm a superhuman, you a decorated unit fusion. Got the music booming, marijuana got me to losing. I'm in my room secluded, get it rooted with the shroom I'm using. Everything you.